the previous video, we walked through the developmental trajectory of our brain from birth to adulthood and through the course of evolution. And we highlighted the fact that our little friend, Amy, the amygdala is very, very powerful. And she's been around a long time doing a great job at keeping us safe. So let's now take a look at how she shows up in our day-to-day -day lives and impacts the way our brain is making sense of the world. Because guess what? She's old school and she is always hanging out. She's part of the old guard of our brain and she is going to consistently be doing our job to make sure we're safe. And she's also exceptionally involved in helping us build a thriving, beautiful life. So when something happens in our environment, our brain gets cued into that. We have all of these five senses that are helping us navigate the world and make sense of how we navigate the world every single day. And so whether it be a loud clang outside or a beloved pet walking into the room, a something happens. And in terms of that, Emily, we spoke about, remember the E, an event, a meaningful landscape and escapable or inescapable experience for a traumatic encoding. This is critical. That something happens thing is very, very important. Now let's imagine that a beloved person or creature walks into the room or you're walking somewhere and you see a beautiful rainbow or a flower that you love. Something has happened and your little brain goes, there's something there. There's a stimulus and that data goes up to your thalamus, which is historically thought about as the post office of our brain. But New science is highlighting that it plays a critical role in so much more and is one of the very rare brain parts that it really is communicating with the entirety of our brain all the time. It links up to our thinking brain and our thinking brain talks to our thalamus to help us make sense of the world around us. And that little thalamus, as it's bringing in that something happening data, says, hey, Amy, what do we know about this information? While well, it's also sending data to other parts of our brain. But again, the amygdala is a really important check-in point because if there's a threat to that something, our little friend Amy the amygdala is going to play a really important role in mobilizing us to help us stay safe. And so if our little friend Amy the amygdala jumps on board and says, oh, that's something that we really like then she's still going to participate in helping us make sense of the world, but she's not going to start mobilizing us into survival states. Instead, she'll go ahead over and link up with our little friend, the hippocampus, as well as other brain parts and say, what do we know about this thing that happened? Do we have positive feelings and experiences tied to it? Hey, hippocampus, which is the narrative component of the history of our brain, our life story, will chime in and say, yeah, we like that person, or that's a pretty flower or whatever it might be. And all of that data is looping up to a system in our brain that is synthesizing and gathering additional information. I love to think of the working memory as the Google search of our brain. It's like we're putting in a search term and the working memory goes, I'm going to go find related components to that search term. Here it might be flower or it might be beloved pet. And the working memory is going to churn up all related data and then help our brain spotlight what matters. That's this interior cingulate gyrus. It's kind of like a mohawk through our brain that says, this is what we're going to pay attention to. It also plays a big role in attachment and safety. It, isn't that cool? And so for feeling safe and loved and connected to somebody, our little brain's going to highlight that. And then finally, our prefrontal cortex much later starts participating in the conversation. So I want you to notice 75 milliseconds, our little brain is jumping into that possible threat assessment. And it's not until 350 milliseconds later that our little friend, Amy, the amygdala is communicating with the rest of our brain and our thinking brain so that our thoughts start to play a role. Ooh, that's really slow. That's actually four times slower than our little survival brain. But if everything is going well and it's a positive experience, our brain hums along beautifully well and we continue through our life. But that's not always the case now, is it? Now let's imagine that that's something that happened was actually really stressful or scary, maybe even a trauma trigger. 
Perhaps there was a loud bang outside and we have had an experience where loud noises were traumatic and stressful. Then our little friend Thalamus is going to ping to Amy and say, Amy, what do we know about this? And she's going to jump into survival mode action. She's going to start taking steps to keep us safe. And the way she does that is she starts recruiting other brain parts to help make sense of the threat. And she starts pulling energy and the energy she's pulling actually pulls away from our thinking brain and into her threat assessment and survival space. And so she's actually more active now and our thinking brain is having the volume dial turn down. And as you can see over here, amygdala alert at 100%. If our little friend Amy's going, oh my gosh, this is a real threat. Our thinking brain is turned off. It is no longer available to chime in. Now, if you've ever had a moment of emotional aggression or shutdown, well, this is what's happening. And sometimes it's as though our little thoughts are whispering back here going, but we know better. What are we doing? And yet we're still going forward with an amygdala driven experience. This is why she is super powerful. And when she sees something that she thinks is threatening, whether it is or not, that's important, whether it is or not, if she has a story that something is scary, she takes charge. And the side effect of that, we're living in a red brain state. We do not have that thinking brain control. We are knocked out of our state of balance and it can take a very, very, very long time to re-regulate. Now on this channel, and you'll find it linked below, we have the CPR for the amygdala playlist. That is a very powerful and quick tool for helping our brain calm down, shrinking that threat response and getting us back to where we want to be, that green brain state, which empowers us to do additional healing. So if you notice that you're living in a state of chronic stress, if you notice that you're triggered or agitated or irritable, that's a good sign that your little friend, Amy, the amygdala might be vibrating and working overtime to keep you safe. That's also a good opportunity to give your little friend, Amy, the amygdala and yourself some good old fashioned loving care. Oh.